Hi, Lace from Retired and Living the Dream. Today's video is going to be about retirement. What's it like? So I'm going to give the car a wash and we'll have a, a rattle through what it's like being retired. Now, I've been retired now for 11 years. I worked in the fire service for 30 years and I was lucky to have the chance to be able to retire at the age of 50 after working 30 years in the fire brigade and I've loved every minute of it I've got to say now because of the situation what's been going on everywhere there are reports that many many people are taking early retirement because of lockdown and change of life and experiences people are taken the chance to retire early and do something with their lives and I can fully understand how people are thinking that way. Some people have discovered working from home is better than working in an office and it allows them the lifestyle to be able to do this with regard to working at home or working anywhere they want to be in the world as long as they can do the job remotely there's nothing really stopping them. I know a couple of people over here in Thailand that are working remotely and making a quite good income from working here in Thailand on their computer. Okay, it's a, it's a little bit different with the time zones and things like for England, at the minute we're seven hours in front of the UK, but it works, they can still make it work. Anyway, going back to my retirement from being 51, sorry, from being 50 years old and now I'm 61, what have I done? Well, when I retired, I travelled around the world for a year and the countries that I visited were, or the places I visited were New York, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, San Francisco, Hawaii, then I visited the um, Fiji Islands, and then, and then I visited New Zealand, North Island, South Island, then I visited Australia, then I visited Singapore, Vietnam, and then we went to India. So I did a lot of traveling. And the things that I learned from traveling is, it's a wonderful experience. Now I'm going to mention a little bit later on how you can virtually travel the world or travel around Europe almost free. Because I've done it and I can give you some examples on how you can do it. Um, again, it was a massive learning experience for me. Traveling around the world, I met some fantastic people it opened my eyes and it was a wonderful experience and I've got to say one couple that I met on a bus in Vietnam we were on the bus for six hours and we never stopped talking he opened my eyes and he gave me some secrets of what he was doing and how you could live a good lifestyle without working and uh, He's probably one of the most interesting guys that I ever met. And just to give you a, a little snippet of his lifestyle, he's never worked for 17 years and he's travelled the world. And how he does that, when he told me what he did, so simple. And I'm going to tell you a little bit later on how you can do that as well. Organisations, where to lock, what to do. And as I say, he, he opened my eyes and I did some of the things that he suggested. And I lived in Italy for three months in somebody's house. I, uh, well, he was a retired judge. She was a retired barrister. And they lived in Italy, a fantastically beautiful location. And my job, was to look after their house and you can imagine the caliber of the house because of the people that were that they were a judge and a barrister beautiful house and my job with my Chinese wife at the time then 
was to look after their house and their cat for three months. Totally free. Uh, free accommodation and the only thing we had to pay for was our food. But anyway, I digress from that. So with regard to traveling around. For those people that have been stuck in work and they've discovered that life can be totally different it is it's enlightening being able to travel around the world and i learned some valuable lessons where i travel to and i'm gonna sort of go through quickly some of the things that i learned whilst traveling around the world and i've got to say there are many things I could talk about, but some of the enlightening moments were when we were in New Zealand, traveling around, we rented a motorhome for three months and we did both the North Island and the South Island. Now, the beauty about New Zealand, you can sort of free camp where you don't have to stop at a campsite. You can just pull up along the side of the road and just stay there the night. Anyway, we met some very interesting people. At a, it wasn't a campsite as such. It was these people who were living in buses and vans and motorhomes. And the old school buses and they, they adapted them and living free on this site. And we met this old lady who'd been living in a, a bus for 15 years. And uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And then how do they make the living? Because um, they had to support themselves. And she learnt some crafts with regard to, she used to paint saws. I'll put a couple of pictures up on the, on the, video there so you can see what type of things I was on about so in the winter months this is what she did because there wasn't many shows or events they could go to so they used to make all their um, things in the winter months and then sell it during the summer months and uh, she just turned her hand to most things and there was other people there painting are just all sorts of things, knickknacks, and and th this is how they made the money. And of course, living on a free campsite type of thing, you know, the minimalistic living. But when she showed me in the inside of a bus, I'm thinking I could live like that. I could live this minimalist lifestyle, and I loved it. And as I say, I met half a dozen people. We stayed there for three nights and we sat drinking and talking to everybody that was on the site and again it opened my eyes as to how cheaply you can live and do you really need all of the modern day stuff that you've got. I mean I live here where I am, it's a, it's a rented house and it's a, a nice house, I have my TVs and my surround sound facilities and me uh, cinema system but I could live without that if I wanted to if I needed to you don't need a lot of money to live like that and uh, one of the other lessons that I learned is when we went to Australia in Sydney wow was that expensive Sydney oh my goodness but there was us, we were backpacking around the world and we were sat in Cockle Shell Bay, I think it was called. It was like the, the business district of Sydney where all the suited and booted people were. And there's us in our backpacker clothes, feeling a little bit scruffy. But we were sat amongst Sydney's elite with the business and the you know, the business district that we were in. And and then came two o'clock 
and the place sort of emptied. All of these suited and booted people going back to the office and going back to work. So I sat there with a the big smug face. I said, one more beer, please. I may not have been wealthy and rich and well healed as some of these people in Australia at the business place, but they were going back to work and I was sat having another beer and I was traveling around the world. And for me, the lifestyle was great. So how much did it cost me to travel around the world? Well, the ticket itself, for a round the world ticket, for a year, was £1,800. And that got me 12 months flight around the world. And we'd sort of booked the places where we were going to go, how long we were going to be there for. And it was sort of a, a ticket that you could alter, you could make six alterations within the year and uh, we did that we we altered it in the amount of times and we spent a year traveling around the world and australia and new zealand and vietnam were the three biggest places that we learned lessons from and as uh, the lesson with australia was you don't need a lot of money and we were sat amongst the hoity polloi and um, we enjoy this you don't have to have a lot of money to stay there and the experiences of how you can do this now I'm going to come on to that as to how you can do this this guy that I met on this bus in Vietnam we were sat on the, the back seats the only two seats that were left on the bus and sometimes it's fear what happens when you meet these people and you know you, you you can meet many people and you you take notice of some people and you just ignore others and this guy I was like a sponge I just wanted to absorb everything that he had to say because he was living the life that I wanted to live and how he did it as I say, he'd never worked for 17 years and he had a small house in England which he rented out, which gave him £500 a month rental income and that was it, and then he had a, a van with a mattress and a porta potty and his son took care of, of that maintained it, so any time that he came back to England this guy had a, somewhere to sleep with a van and travel around and that was his accommodation but he only came back to England very rarely because over the 17 years he'd build up a, a group of people that he house sat for in other words he looked after people's houses while they had holidays looking after their pets and there's a big big market for this looking after people's animals because animals are so tiring anybody that's got a dog or a cat or an animal here you know how tiring it can be you can't go on your holidays because you've got to worry about who's going to look after the cat or the dog or the birds or your fish or whatever animals it may be so there's a market where you could go and look after these people's houses and in exchange for looking after their pets and because I was an electrician also there was a, another scheme that I was I joined and the two places I'm going to mention here are Workaway and Helpex now you don't have to have the skill just have the willing to work or the willing to be able to do something and again you're in demand around the world but obviously the more skills you got the better jobs you can you can uh, ask for now again as they've been an electrician I sort of could pick and choose where I wanted to work and I've worked in the south of France I've worked in the middle of France I got offered jobs in Portugal I got offered jobs in Fiji now I would have took Fiji job but that was two and a half thousand pounds airfare to get to Fiji so I turned that one down 
but in exchange for working four or five hours a day for five days a week you've got all your food and your accommodation now some accommodation was better than others but on the whole it was good value and then you had the weekends off to go and do your exploring or visiting around or you could work an extra an hour a day or so for the week and get another day off so we had three days off it's very very flexible up to the people who were offering the the work now you could work anywhere in the world as i said mentioned i worked in italy and i worked in the south of france and i've done a little bit of work in Kokud in thailand now i was there for a uh, three weeks and he asked me whether i could stay there for a year just as a uh, doing the electrics around the, the resort but the accommodation was that bad i said no i'm not going to work and live in a horrible little place and um and because he wouldn't give me a better accommodation i just said okay then i no need to live like this i don't need the money because thankfully i'm on a pension so therefore you know i didn't rely on, on anything like that but f this is for all of those people that are newly retired and they want to think there's got to be more to life than what i'm living at the minute with i've worked all my life and now it's time to have some adventure and how do you get this adventure if anybody wants any more details with regard to this or ask any questions put a link down below sorry look at the link down below my email address and i'll answer any questions that you may have it is a fantastic feeling being able to travel the world meet different people it opens your eyes for sure and it's well worth well worth the effort and there are many people who do it you don't have to be young to be able to do it you can be old in fact some of the people that i work for preferred the older people because they were more experienced in life and in being able to do things now some of the things that i did i did a uh, a roof conversion in France in some sheets because I did rope rescue in the fire brigade I did some abseiling to help renovate a, a brick uh, I was going to say a brick building but it used to be a, for making pottery and uh, they just wanted some of the brickwork pointing up so I used my abseil skills to be able to abseil down and point this building up and uh, that was a, a fantastic experience it really really was but even if you're just a gardener or stuff like that I met a guy from Canada who used to be the manager of FedEx or one of the branches of FedEx and uh, he had no other skills or qualifications apart from being a manager he learned how to do lime rendering in France and he gave up living in Canada and they said a bit like this guy who traveled the world for 17 years discovered that there was more to life than being sat in an office in Canada and he built up some people's houses where he used to work and then he used to be able to do the lime rendering making money on the weekend because it's quite a skilled job he was in well demand in France and he made a lot of money doing that and uh, he met a French girl met a French girl fell in love and he now lives in France and uh, so just because you live in one country doesn't mean to see you you're not going to live elsewhere here's me born and bred in England from a poor family we lived uh, in a very poor place when I was younger my mum and dad both worked both worked hard and my dad had a very good work ethics where I get my ethics from morals principles and scruples 
they serve you very well in life. And there's me thinking when I grew up in a poor town, we had no money whatsoever. I'm thinking I'll never travel the world, I'll never go on holiday because we're poor. And now I live here. At the other side of the world, in Thailand. Never thinking ever that I would live in Thailand when I was younger. And I only actually came to Thailand when I was 42. First ever time I've been to Thailand. And here I am now, 61. And my channel's called Retired and Living the Dream. And I've got to say, I'm living the dream. It's a beautiful place here in Thailand. I love every minute of living here. And my channel helps other people move here, live here. And how to do it. So anyway, that's my little ramble with regard to living here in Thailand. So if anybody's got any questions, contact the link below and I'll answer wherever I can. But being retired, don't be afraid of it. It's a fantastic feeling. So from Les, retired living the dream. Until the next video, bye for now.